Welcome to Diversity Talk Series, powered by Great Companies, Great Leaders podcast and sponsored by Best Companies AZ and Career Connectors. I'm your host, Christine Gannon. I'm the founder and CEO of Brightworks Consulting, and we are a boutique consulting firm focused on helping companies at the local level with DE&I solutions that make a difference. And whether that's developing the entire strategy for DE&I or providing the latest best practices and policies, we really like to offer a roadmap to our clients to improve the culture of their company. Today, we are honored to host the Diversity Talk series that was created to connect with award-winning companies. These companies are committed to fostering a work environment where the differences that we're born with and those we acquire throughout our lives are understood, they're valued, and they're celebrated. We're having conversations with Arizona's top employers to talk about how a focus on diversity and inclusion leads to better performance, increased innovation, and enhanced ability to address your customers' needs and a more vibrant culture. And today we are super honored to have another great conversation with award-winning company Ideas Collide. And with us today is Vicki Diaz. She is the brand and business development manager. Welcome, Vicki. Hi, thanks for having me. Absolutely. So a little bit about Vicki, her background. She is a marketing and communications professional with over 10 years of experience. She's been a part of several notable brands such as PBS, NPR, Salvation Army, Best Western Hotels and Resorts, and also Arizona State University. Go Devils! <laughs> she has been a member of the Ideas Collide team since September 2021. She's a brand and business development manager, and in her role, she leads IC Brand Content, which I think stands for Ideas Collide. Yes. Brand Content and Social as well as leads important agency initiatives like Ideas Collide Gives and DE&I. And we're going to talk a little bit about both of those. So Vicki, tell us a little bit about your role at the company. Yeah, you know, it's sort of like molded and, and shifted, I think, as I become further immersed into Ideas Collide and, and definitely began to assess sort of um, some areas that I knew that I had wealth and knowledge and experience that I could come bring into. So it's, uh, it's a little bit of a hybrid role. So on one side, I deal a lot with a client still that do, that are on, within our business development side. And so I have a lot of that great conversations and a lot of experience um, working with them on their brand and their mission. Um, and then on the reverse side, I also lead a lot of the um, internal uh, communications and branding as it relates to ideas collide. So as you mentioned, just a few things, everything from uh, our, you know, diversity, equity, inclusion team to our giving and volunteer efforts to um, internship program, um, social and uh, content and thought leadership. So really finding the ways of how we can continue to further not only broaden our, our brand uh, reach, not only internally, but externally with partners and, and potential community um, re relationships, um, but also definitely making sure that as people come in, um, as they're considering us as a place of employment, that there is a robust amount of resources and connection mm -hmm. to, um, you know, now we're in a remote world. So really finding all those ways of opportunity to connect, not only remotely in a hybrid way, but with those who are in our Phoenix office and those who are within our Portland office. Fantastic. Well, you know, when I was reading your bio and I was thinking about all the brands that you're associated with, and I was thinking about what you were just saying about your role, I'm sure you brought forth a lot of those experiences with you. Would you, would you agree in terms of like a culmination almost of all your experiences bringing that into this role? Yeah, Absolutely. I'm one of those individuals, like I'm a firm believer that every place that you go to, no matter how long or short your, um, your stay is within that company, you're definitely learning and pooling, whether it's new experiences, the ways that you could do something or, you know, imprinting what you have learned from past employers into this new position. And so I definitely have done that. You know, each place that I've gone to has been different in so many ways, whether it's mission uh, that's dif different, mm -hmm. whether it's the structure and the format, the way a business is run is different. Um, 
I really do try to find all of those pieces that I can continue to further take along with me. And then also in hindsight, be able to not only implement that into my position, into the culture, but also, you know, definitely as a person who works a lot with our interns, um, really giving them the opportunity to, to be able to learn and grow and get that hands-on experience. So important, isn't it? Just having yeah. more than book knowledge, right? Absolutely. <laughs> and I, I even tell them too, one of the, the first things I remember I learned as an intern was I, uh, my supervisor at that time is at PBS when I first started there. She asked me to come to her desk and I went there and, you know, she's kind of giving me all these notes and these stories and I'm just standing there going, great, got it, got it, sure. And I'm just trying to sh- first just show up so that was in my mind, okay, let, let me just show up, show that I'm here, I'm listening. And I remember at the end, she goes, are you going to remember all this? And I'm like, yeah, of course. Like, yeah, absolutely. And she's like, okay. She's like, I, I, I love, she's like your confidence, but she's like, one thing that I, like, I'll tell you is no matter what you do, whether you're going to a meeting that you know is going to be an hour brainstorming session, or whether you're just walking over to someone's desk, whether it's you approaching them with a question or whether it's. Um, them coming to you for um, actionable items. She's like, I recommend always coming with a notepad or, you know, now, you know, we just take our computers everywhere, but she was like, I recommend that because she's like, I bet she's like, when you walk back, she's like, you're going to remember certain things, but then you're going to be like, okay, wait, actually, what was that last thing that she just said? Or, you know, you begin to like, sort of then go through your mind and try to replay that. And so I was like, okay, and I remember once I started to implement that too, of uh, going to meetings or going quickly to talk to someone at their desk and having that, it helped me so much. And also too, because I'm I'm a talker. I also like to really think and internalize information. I'm an observer as well. And so that has really helped me to be able to not only retain that information, but also process it because it works in a number of ways. It's just like this constant cycle workflow. And so I always make sure I tell my interns that I go, take notes. I go, especially <laughs> now we're in a remote sort of setting. Yeah. I can't see you as much as I would like to, or be able to just quickly jot something down. So however, it's easier for you to retain that. I go, please do that. So that's usually, I I always try to think too of all these things that I learned from my managers, um, how that makes me as as a manager myself um, to make sure that I'm giving the best kind of experience and the best knowledge. And um, like I mentioned, especially with um, with interns, giving them as much quality information so that when, when they move on to their endeavor, their next endeavor, they're taking something with them. And one aspect of that too, that I strongly believe in is giving them the opportunity to not only own projects, but to be able to walk away from an internship with tangible Mm -hmm. items to showcase it. So whether it's a social post, it's an article, it's um, having the opportunity to be present at an event and help lead it. I try to find ways to give them that experience and again, that tangible aspect that they can go and they can show, Hey, I wrote this article. There's my name. I did the research. I wrote it and, and really be able to, to then build themselves up wherever they go next. Well, your interns are very lucky to have you. They really (laughs) are. It sounds like you have a really robust program. It's awesome. Yes. That's been a great thing too, working with, you know, our HR director, especially because I'm sure we'll dive into it a little bit deeper, but I have a new sort of sense of in this role, getting to work with our HR director much closer than I think I I have in other positions because of the nature of this position. So Mm -hmm. that's also been a really great dynamic to get to work on an internship program and work with her to make sure it hits, you know, the attraction retention and the onboarding aspect as well. Awesome. Well, let's let's stay on this topic, but talk a little bit about Ideas Collide and 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 the company itself and how. Well, I guess your perspective on how they demonstrate their commitment to diversity and inclusion. Yeah, that's a great question. I, you know, truly that was one of the things. I, funny enough, um, 
I was on the client side before I I came to the agency side. So I definitely had some kind of experience with Ideas Collide prior to joining as a full-time employee. And one of the aspects of that that I I could sense from just even my my communication due during a pandemic of emails was I could sense that there was this great sense of collaboration and communication and um, and even diversity and, and just the way that they not only took off certain holidays or the way that they came together during you know kickoff meetings. Now, I really got a sense of that and that was really what enticed me. And so when I found myself looking for that next endeavor myself, I, funny enough, even my supervisor at that time who was with me on the client side was like, hey, have you thought about Ideas Collide? And I was like, okay. And I just remember even during that initial process, um, one thing that stood out to me, I think the last interview that I had was, you know, in a panel setting. And it happened just to be a day that things just weren't going right. I, I'm, I'm a single mo- mother of a three-year-old. At that time, she was two. So I'm sitting in, you know, very similar setting like this. You're on a video call. I'm like, okay, I'm trying to sh- showcase all my best colors because I want this job. And I just have mayhem going behind me. I have a toddler bouncing around, asking for snacks. And I just remember going, okay, I'm, I'm feeling frazzled and I'm sure it's showing. And, you know, there was a moment I was like, I'm sorry, can I just pause and quickly go get her a snack? I'll be right back. And I remember thinking like, okay, that's it. That's shot my shot. Um, and later on, you know, I, when I received the job and, um, I connected with my, my manager who was on the hiring panel. I remember we started discussing things, you know, because as a single parent, I, I definitely have moments where I just met with her like in one-on-one saying, Oh man, I'm beat. I'm tired. And she told me something that really solidified, I think the whole aspect, especially inclusion, when we think about DEI, the inclusion part was, she told me, she's like, not only did I hire you because you were the best fit and your experience and your personality, she's like, but the way you handled yourself as a parent and as a single mother, balancing, you know, work in that sense, you know, doing a job interview and your responsibilities and duties as a parent, she goes, that's what sold it for me. Just like the way that you handled it, the way that I saw that you could balance both and do both. And to me, that, that meant a lot because it's, I think, um, as a single parent, uh, you, you know, that stuff, you know, especially now in a new age of pandemic of working remotely, working, you know, from home, you know, the, the various aspects that came from, you know, the last two to three years of, of the world changing, you know, that became something that I was um, very protected of, and also really, I guess, self-conscious of, Mm -hmm. and to hear someone, especially someone that I admire, who not only is, you know, my supervisor, but someone who I think is a great leader in her own right, telling me that, uh, it it definitely solidified for me, and like, okay, that, that person also works at Ideas Collide, and that is the culture, and the dynamic that they're making a priority for others. And so that to me, that was one of the experiences that I had first that I just was like, oh, sold. I love it. Um, and then now being on board, you know, there are a number of ways that we show that our, that our commitment to what we not only practice, what we preach, um, you know, we have a DI team, which is um, encompassed of numerous individuals across the agency. It's all a volunteer basis. Um, everyone can come and join as they please. Uh, so we, we meet on a, on a a monthly basis and only talking about the next month in terms of like what we're focusing on, what initial projects we have going on that fit within the various pillars that we, that we sort of, um, created for our, um, initiative. Um, but we also have, uh, subcommittees, but, you know, also, uh, um, ERGs, employee resource groups that not only feed further, uh, deeper into a lot of the main pillars that we focus on, but we also have a diversity pledge. So anytime we have a new hire, they go through um, a, a DEI onboarding, which is something I help lead. Um, we'll have new hires come. I will go through a deck 
but I try to, it always changes every new hire um, phase. So it's never always the same, which I love because obviously what we're doing within our um, DEI focus and initiatives is always changing because things are always moving. So really getting to showcase, you know, our pledge, showcasing what we're focusing on, showcasing what are our goals. So that's one of the big things too, is, is always wanting to to have some transparency. So I always try to keep that um, in mind and focused on. And then we go through what's happening, what we've done in the past and how they can play a part of that. Like they don't have to be part of, you know, our initial DEI team, but being a part of our agency and part of that culture, you know, there is a sense of responsibility and opportunity that everyone has um, all year round um, as, you know, new, n- new themes and new initiatives come into play. So I kind of give a list of what that looks like. Um, and so one of those pieces is, is engagement and interaction on social because we do very much integrate our DEI focus and initiatives into our social campaigns. Um, so for example, it, you know, uh, Women's History Month, instead of just posting, you know, one post saying it's Women's History Month, like go and celebrate the women that you know, it's like, okay, how do we tie that, you know, to that national conversation, but still have it very much tied to who we are as an agency and what are the things that matter to us? And so we did profiles on various women at the agency and, you know, would have a picture of them. We would have a quote of them, you know, because we'd give them various uh, prompts for them to answer. And so we would highlight, you know, their piece of advice for, you know, the new generation, the next generation of um, female professionals, and then also give them tidbits of who they are, you know, whether they're uh, new moms, you know, we had some that we featured who are new moms and trying to juggle, you know, working and being a professional, but also being a full-time parent, especially, like I said, in in a pandemic, post-pandemic world where we're still working remotely. Then we had some who had great relationships with their mother and their grandmothers and like what's that's taught them and how they're pushing that forward for themselves and for their own community and network and, you know, vice versa. So we always try to find ways of how we can tie those to our our brand um, and our external messaging. So that way, Mm -hmm. not only clients and partners and potential clients and partners and employees can really get a sense of what matters to us and what matters to our employees. I think and that's your the commitment most, and your, commitment. yeah, exactly. And that's the really commitment. the big piece I, I can say is the way that we funnel and the way that we work with DEI is not, it's not our CEO telling us, okay, we need to be focusing on this, this, and this. It really is employee driven. Um, it really is executive leadership employees of all different, you know, rankings, you know, project coordinators to senior account directors coming together and sharing what matters to them, sharing their ideas, what, how they want to learn. And, you know, possibly that could be the way that other employees want to learn and finding all the various different um, areas that we can filter that learning and growth. And, um, and a number of those ways are like, aside from social is we find those ways within our content and we have, um, what we call IC blogs and that is our form of thought leadership. So of course we focus on things that are happening within marketing and, you know, our various services that we offer and, you know, our honors and recognitions, but we also try to tap into how can we bridge us as, you know, subject matter experts within, you know, brand marketing, marketing, um, social content, so forth, but still showcase the aspects of our DEI that, that matter to us. So one blog that we wrote about was brand activism, um, because there are so many brands out there, who, right. especially in the last couple of years, have really stepped up and it's no longer just a monthly like observance for them to do x y and z now it's become so integrated into people's missions um for example you know patagonia or rei um you know ben and jerry's you know these huge corporations who have now really further solidified their focus and their mission to to their dei efforts and so you know really getting to express that of okay 
as a brand, are you ready for this? And this is what it means and, and really helping break it down and give them examples and also recommendations of, of how they can do that for themselves or their brands. So we come across in all aspects and, um, and it's, and it's fantastic. And so, and of course we do things such as events and, um, you know, watch parties and lunch and learn. So there's a number of ways that we really bring everyone together to, to celebrate, you know, that's a big thing is celebrate, have conversations and, and learn from one another. So it's really demonstrating the commitment, both internal and external. Honestly, when I listen yes. to you, it's, you have so many ways and channels and modalities that you're using to just really express the deep level of commitment to DEI to not only your employee base, but prospective employees right. and, and other organizations to, in the community to let them know that you're not just talking about it. You're not just implementing a one-off training. You have a holistic strategy that absolutely. And I, I can imagine that it also um, impacts retention, right? Yes. So when employees feel like they belong and they feel like it's an inclusive culture, they they stay, right? Or on the on the opposite of that, they leave when they don't feel that. So I feel like that was really an intentional, you know. Yeah, and and like I said, in especially within leading DEI, any number of our, our brand uh, and culture uh, initiatives. I'm getting the opportunity to not only work with our director of human of, of human resources, um, and even working with her not only to making sure that we have an onboarding solution for DI for new hires. And so part of that onboarding isn't just like a presentation and be like, okay, you're done. Like I said, we have that diversity pledge. We have, you know, the number of ways that they can take part, and that can be including their pronouns, you know, their preferred pronouns within their signatures. It's, um, we have a, a survey that we send out to new hires to get a sense of where they are in their DEI journey. Like right. not every place has, you know, a DEI team or DEI focus. And so this helps us to gauge that, to be able to understand, okay, people coming in, their knowledge or their experience has been very limited. Okay, so we know that we can definitely amplify, you know, more of those learning resources um, in the next few months. Or some who tell us that they have experience, um, but it's been more like this and not like that. You know, so it really gets a sense of how to best continue pushing our, our DEI focus and helps the team itself know how to best strategize. Um, and one of the things too, with not only within the team, is we have various pillars that we focus on. So the four main things that we focus on when that, that make up our, our DEI um, initiative is education and training. So thinking of things that are always just learning resources, sure, sure. Um, whether that's, you know, bringing in a subject matter expert to do a lunch and learn, whether that is um, a watch party where we're watching a video and then having a discussion afterwards or even we have an internal newsletter that we get sent out um, weekly. And one thing that I always do is uh, I put pieces of content in there, whether it's um, focusing on Hispanic Heritage Month and here are you know, things that you can watch, read and listen to, or um, if it's something that's relating to a personal story um, from one of our team members, pushing that out. Uh, we also work on talent uh, attraction and retention. So I work very closely with Nicole, who is our director of human resources, to make sure that within uh, an employee's journey and time at Ideas Clyde, that those aspects are taken care of, that they're feeling seen and heard and valued. And that can come in a lot of different ways, not just DEI, but pertaining to DEI, that's where we work a lot together to make sure that that's always there, that, that foundation's always there, that we're always building upon it, that we're always hearing for employees to make sure we're making decisions for them um, based on what they're looking for. Uh, another pillar is we work on our consciously thinking about who our community partners and clients mm -hmm. are. Um, not only in the sense of, of how diverse their leadership is, you know, whether it's female run or female owned, 
but also thinking about like their mission, you know, who right. are they focusing on? How are they helping? How are they giving back to the community? So really making sure that the partners and clients that we're bringing in and we're working with also very much go hand in hand with our values and our mission. And lastly, the other pillar that we work on is just our general internal culture and, and identity. And when I say identity, I'm talking about all the individuals who make up our organization, because that's the great thing about, I think, anywhere that you go is right. such a diverse set of people, right. um, whether it's, like I mentioned, uh, you know, race and uh, ethnicity to sexual orientation, or even caregivers and parents. And, you know, there's so many ways that everyone has like their subcategories and things that make them and their individuals. So our culture and identity um, pillar really does help focus on that to make sure that we're telling various stories and that those types of stories that we're telling, we're also bringing back into the way that we approach strategy and um, messaging with our clients. Um, so it is definitely, like I said, it's a full circle that always keeps going. And, and so those are the, the number of ways that we that we continue to make sure that that gets filtered into everything that we do internally and externally. I really appreciate it. I appreciated all the pillars, but I really appreciated that last pillar as well, because oftentimes um, we define diversity as race and gender when really right. there's so many elements of that make up diversity. So if someone says the leadership team isn't diverse, are they? Are they yeah. not? Right. <laughs> Right. It's, it's just a deeper discussion. There's diversity of thought. There's so, so many elements that make up diversity, which makes it so rich and exciting, um, but opportunities. Right? Absolutely. So one of the things that we do, um, and we just actually started doing this uh, since I came aboard, we now on a quarterly basis, we look at and update our internal data. So pretty much we have, you know, the graphs and, you know, the numbers and all those things that break it up, but we get to look at, okay, who makes up our agency? Who's here? And of course we have, you know, some of the standards of, sure. of female, male, sure. um, looking at uh, um, uh, ethnicity sure. um, within the various rankings, but we also have been measuring not only parents, um, marital status, and of course all this information is is on a volunteer basis. So sure. sometimes it's not always fully accurate, but it gives us the opportunity um, to not only share this, like I said, one of the big things that, at least for us as Ideas Collide, that is a big aspect to our DEI efforts is transparency. We wanna make sure that what we're doing and collecting isn't just for us. Like it's not, I don't, I don't need this to, to go about my yeah. day, but it's needed so we all know where we all stand and we all know how we can better not only contribute, um, but also learn. Um, and, and create a more inclusive culture. Absolutely. Right? All those so, elements create inclusivity. Yes. And that's a big piece. I think that's something that I found in the past has, you know, that kind of gets dropped off a little bit when you talk about diversity, equity, and inclusion. You you lose the inclusion part because people don't, I don't maybe don't understand like the definitions of everything and how they differ. And like you said, people think diversity as just, you know, black and white, um, male and female when really it, it's so much more. And, um, it, and it's, it's a wonderful thing too, getting to have that information and getting to see everyone who makes up our agency um, and being able to strategically plan, you know, learnings and events and, um, and in general, just discussions based on that to know, okay, we have a 2% of X, Y, and Z. So we know that maybe, maybe the information is not, not there. People don't have that. So how can we give it to them? Um, and, and so to even break it down a little bit further, we have those four pillars of, you know, the culture and identity, um, a, a, attraction and retention the community partners and clients and education and training, but we also have, I guess that brings it down more into our ERGs, our, our subcommittees. So the areas that we focus on and, and I have sub leaders in there to help me, you know, I, I, cause I will say this, it's not, DEI is really not a one person show, 
like I said, there are so many people, everyone has to show up to some extent. And it's also helpful to have other team members who are contributing to these um, initiatives and moving them forward and bringing ideas. So I definitely want to preface that saying that I I, I definitely can lead it, um, but I have so many people on our DI team who really help make things possible with, you know, like I said, just their actions and their presence right. and their ideas. And so um, within these subcommittees, these ERGs that we have, we have various team leads on that. Um, and we focus on volunteer and giving, uh, LGBTQ plus, uh, caregivers and parents. Um, we focus on culture and identity. And then most recently, we just launched a soft launch uh, late August, um, our women's empowerment and allyship group. So really focusing on building our female professional within our organization. But uh, I think it was really important to add allyship, which goes to say for all of these ERGs, but especially for the women's empowerment, because it's not just for women, it's, it's, it's focused on it. But I, I, we strongly believe that, you know, we can't make a whole lot of change or, or really feel like these conversations are amplifying if we don't have allies there to not only weigh in, but to also be individuals who can help make those, those actions happen on, in the real world, you know, place. Right. And so, right. so that's been exciting to launch that. So Ideas Collide is a phenomenal organization. All that you have just talked about with us, all that you've shared in terms of not only programming, but you're really treating it as an initiative that becomes part of the DNA of the company yeah. versus a project. So you said it, can't be one person, has to be a champion, right? That is leading, but it really does take everyone in the organization because it's about the culture and it's about the people that make up the culture. And so just really, really honored that you took the time with us today. So thank you. And I'm going to throw you a quick curveball at the end of this, which is, who is your hero? Oh, I, so I, I, I'm trying not to cop out, but I want to say it's, I'm going to mold it into a few people. Okay. Um, I am of his, his Mexican American heritage. And one of the things that I really value about our culture is family dynamic. I grew up with three other sisters, my mother, you know, my grand, my, my grandparents, and so very strong women. And I value that so much. And I think over time, especially as you get older, and especially as I became a mother myself, you start to really, you know, analyze life. You're like, oh, okay, that's why my mom did that. That's why my grandmother did that. And, and even my sisters, you know, they've been mothers longer than I have. Um, and so for me, I would say the women in my family, I, even with my younger sisters, I learned something from them. I'm always amazed by that as well of how much I take from them. Um, even my sister, who's 13 years younger than me, who is still in college, who doesn't have kids, isn't married, she doesn't quite live the life that I lived, but she still has such a presence to her. And emotional and, and mental maturity that I'm like, at that age, I did not have. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, my two older sisters as well, I, I look at them as the way that they have tackled life situations, um, the way that they go about in providing for their family and, you know, navigating so many different um, highs and lows in life. And also, you know, thinking and vice versa of like when I would, went through some pretty high and lows in my life, I got some of the best advice and some of the best support I could imagine from them. And, and this, you know, same thinking about my mother, my, my grandmothers, you know, these women, especially thinking of them growing up in such a different era, a different time, there was such different circumstances and seeing what they did with life and who that, who th those circumstances, how that shift that shapes them into who they are. And, you know, like I said, some pretty tough things of, you know, life, things that they have experienced and they are the kindest, most warmest women that I know. And I can only wish that I'm 
half the, the, the woman and mother, my, my mother was, my grandmother was to her and, you know, vice versa. And to know that in spite of life and, 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 and all that, that they, that they still have such a strong sense of themselves, of their faith, of their mental, like thinking, like, I, I absolutely just, I love that. So I would definitely say all the women in my family, I can only wish I love them it. anything like that. I them. love it. It was beautiful. Thank you. Thanks for letting me throw you that curveball. I love, of course. <laughs> love to close out with that because it's just um, humanizes us, right? Humanizes yeah. us in terms of um, where our values are. So thank you, Vicki. You were a phenomenal guest. Really appreciate you being uh, part of this series and representing Ideas Collide. Appreciate you being here today. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Brightworks Consulting hosts this podcast and YouTube channel to spotlight the leadership around the world that is changing lives. Brightworks offers a myriad of consulting services in the public and private sector to include diversity, equity, and inclusion solutions for any size company. You can find us at www.brightworksconsulting.com. We're honored to have Best Companies AZ as a presenting sponsor for this podcast. Best Companies AZ is your number one source for regional employer branding. You can find them at www.bestcompaniesaz.com.